guys want to show your pictures? Yeah. I show your I pictures. Me. There we I go. Me. <laughs> Kai drew a picture and Maya drew a picture. Happy Saturday, everybody. Me. Hopefully you're having a great morning that's a little quieter than mine. We're doing kettlebell strength and power today. Hey, Reva. Here from Jerusalem, Teresa, Natalie in Minnesota with her husband. Yes. Amazing. Cynthia from Long Island. Yay! Trichy is here. It's you. You drew a picture of you, a self-portrait. Good job. Alozia is here. Awesome, everybody. All right, guys, do you want to say bye and show your picture one more time and go with Daddy? Bye. Say bye. Hey, Emily's going to do it tomorrow. My, my picture says bye. Her picture says bye. Hey, can you go with Daddy? That's a great picture. Oh, good. You drew a picture right under my workout. <laughs> Angela just did the kickboxing already. Oh, double Saturday. All right, let's go with Daddy. Let's go with Daddy. Okay. 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 Thank you. Say bye. Oh, my goodness. I'm not, I love it. I'm going to show them. I'm not going to erase it. Good morning, Judy in Wisconsin, Rhonda in Canada, Catherine in the UK. Hey, Laura is here. Awesome. Yes, they are lovely children. <laughs> There's usually, we never really make it through a live uh, introduction without one person being pouty, right? I guess that's how it goes. Kai did draw us a lovely picture. Here's your workout, guys, and here's your picture. So get excited. I tried to hide it where you wouldn't really be able to see it. All right, so strength and power today. We are gonna have a great time. If you did dumbbell kettle, uh, dumbbell strength and power last week, you got a little preview. That's kind of how it's gonna work. We're gonna be working with our kettlebells. If you don't have a kettlebell, use a dumbbell or whatever you've got. I've got my kettlebells, I'm using 15, 18, 25. Use whatever you've got. If you have options, keep them close by. Strength and power, we're gonna have a strength back to basic moves. We're gonna add a little power to it. We'll put some things together. It's gonna be a good time. You won't even feel like you need cardio because your heart rate is gonna stay at, hey, Dixie is here. Allison in St. Louis, yes. Laquel, hi, Amy and kids. Debbie, first time on a live. Yes, Laquel is in Atlanta. I love it. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Let's go ahead and get it done. All right, so make sure you have your space. Make sure you have your kettlebells or your weights or whatever you're using. Make sure you have your water. And let's, yes, Trishy is ready to rock. Me too. I'm here is here. Let's get it done. All right, go ahead and start just with a march or a jog, whatever is good for you. Let's get those muscles warm. Shake everything out. Woo. There we go. Roll those shoulders. You can start small. Take them to the back. Ah, let's just shake off the week. Whatever happened this week in your work week, in your week at home, whatever it was, let's just let it all go and get ready to move this weekend. Ah, Dixie's going to the hairdresser. Oh yeah, don't do the workout. You, you know, enjoy that hair. I try to schedule my hair appointments when I don't have to work out. Uh, yeah, you can do it later. Have fun, Dixie. Hey, honey is here. Whoo, big deep breath in and out. Let's open up wide with those arms and breathe. Big stretch. Can you start that one? All right, I'll do it. <laughs> My producer has his headphones in and he also is about to go watch some kids. Let's take those arms up. Drop it down, you keep going. Two timers going. Reach it up, reach down the front of the legs. So think about that deadlift, that hinge, that stretch through the back of the legs. And then if you want, walk it out. I got it. <laughs> and walk it back and breathe, walk it out. <laughs> As you all know, Kurt has a lot of jobs, especially on a Saturday morning. Hold it here if you can, press up in that down dog. He had his headphones in and was listening to the broadcast, but because of that, he heard me on a delay say, can you set my other timer? <laughs> walk it back. Anyway, a little behind the scenes for you guys. Tap it back, open up those hips, 
Michaela Med School has been kicking my butt. Oh my goodness, you're amazing, Michaela. Good for you for taking some time to move your body today. Ah, uh, drop it down in that lunge if you can. Little stretch over, and if you want to take it down, reach it up. Allison has had a long week with a sick husband and kids. Oh no, I'm sorry. Ready to blow off some steam. Glad that you're feeling good to be here. Switch your legs, take it back. Reach it up and over, take it down, reach it up. Drop that knee, open up that hip. Let's get one more each side, almost there. Just because we love this stretch. Reva, I always wondered how he produced and watched the kids at the same time. It is not easy, but he does it. But that's why the kids have to be in here in the beginning. It drives him crazy, but that's what we gotta do, right? You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Reach it up, drop it down. Ha, ha. And then they go in with him and he manages, whoo, roll it up. I will tell you that normally, this involves a little bit of TV time for the kids during the live, because otherwise there would be no way. Kurt is managing it from the inside, watching the live, making sure nothing happens. So, yep, spoiler, we have to let the kids watch TV. <laughs> Chelsea is here. Chelsea, I hope you're feeling good. Oh, bring him up right here. So if this is your first time live, that's it's always a little crazy in the beginning. Most of you tell me you like it because <laughs> it's relatable to a lot of you guys that have kids, right? Ah, stretch it out. Breathe. All right, team, so let's get to it. We're gonna start with a strength-based move. We're gonna add a little power to it. Then we're gonna put some things together. So I, I'm here, just pop my four kids in front of the TV too. Right, you gotta do it. Alexandra, you're here. Just get a little warm up on your own. All right, team, so we're gonna grab a heavy kettlebell. We're starting with a squat. So if you're just joining, it's strength and power kettlebell. We're gonna start with the strength. We'll add some power. We'll put some things together. I'm gonna talk you through it. Don't worry about intervals. All right, heavy kettlebell, starting with our squat. Back to basics. You can have the kettlebell here. You can have it goblet, whatever is good for you. We're gonna sit low, core is engaged. Whoo, here we go. Drop it down, we're here. Drive up through the heels. So on the first move, I want you to really pay attention to that form. So our back to basics, drive those hips back. Weight all the way through the feet, but really driving through the heels. Chest is open and proud. We want to make sure we're not rounded here, right? We're here. Ha, Victoria says so relatable in South Africa. Wendy's little one is doing homework next to dad. Good. Yay! Pam and her sister. Keep breathing, we got five seconds. Regular squat, whatever it is for you. And breathe, so little stretch, give yourself a little stretch, give your hands a little break from that. All right, so just like we did last week, you'll remember this one, we're gonna add a little power. We're gonna drop it down with that squat, so a squat, not a deadlift, here, little jump, grab it up, all the way up. If you don't feel like jumping or you're not doing impact, take it here. Still get that power up on your toes. Either way, I just want intentional power. Drive it up either with toes or jump, alternating between picking up that kettlebell. Let's get it done in three, two, one. Here we go. So squat, drop it down, jump it up, grab it here all the way up. Every other one. Power either toes or jump all the way up. So it does feel like we're adding in a little bit of a deadlift. That's okay. But make sure that you still drop those hips. <sighs> Keep it going. Yes, Paula is driving back home. I'm gonna do this workout tomorrow. Paula is on a trip. Love to see so many of my athletic clubbers here today. Whew. Keep it going, guys. How's that heart rate, right? You're feeling it. Like I said, we don't need a ton of extra cardio intervals because we're gonna get it done right here. Whew. Five seconds, whatever that is for you. Three, two, one, catch your breath, yes! All right, team, now we're feeling that cardio. All right, so let's take it 
two, whoo, a bicep curl, right? So we're gonna keep it super simple. We're here, down and up. So if you want, you can do one side curling. Ooh, I don't know if I can do that with my 18, but maybe with my 15. If you'd rather, you can curl one side and I'm gonna tell you the halfway point if you have a little lighter kettlebell. Otherwise, keep it between two, core engaged. Here we go, taking it up and down, up and down. Again, back to basics. I want you to think about that form. Chest is open and proud. We just mean like not rounding in your shoulders. Knees are soft, feet shoulder width apart. If you feel like you're arching that back, put one foot back. Core is engaged, yes. And breathe, take it up and down. One more right here. Good, give your hands a little break. So, just like with the dumbbells, what is our power version? It's gonna be a little clean. Two options with this kettlebell. You can just toss it to yourself, little catch, which we love if you wanna have two, or one side, it's here and down. So when we do a clean and we get to that snatch, you're rolling the kettlebell around. It's not just a flip, it's Think about that kettlebell coming around in a circle. It's a little tricky. If you've never done it before, keep it with this two-handed. This time, I promise I will tell you the halfway point. <laughs> Here we go. We're cleaning it in three, two, one. Take off. Two hands. We're up. And breathe. Here to here. If you're just one. And down. It's a clean. Ooh, right? So again, circling it around, halfway there. So switch your arms if you're just doing one. If you got two hands, clean. So remember, it's a little bit of hip action, little bit of power, come up off those feet, right? Core is engaged. You just got one, we're here, right? Keep it going, five, four, three, two, one hands get a little break all right guys so you guessed it you know what's coming we're gonna clean into a squat we're actually gonna add a press to it as well so it looks like this your super back to basics version you don't want to do any of the power work it's just your squat curl at the top so curl squat add a press if you want if you want to clean it two hands it's a clean squat Let's add a press. All right, one hand, halfway, clean, racket, squat, and press. All right, I'll tell you the halfway point. We're gonna go up for a full minute because you can do it. Let's get it done in three, two, one. Curl or clean, squat it down, press it up, drop it low. Clean, squat, and press. If you're one hand, clean, racket, squat, and press down clean racket squat and down a little bit of power remember so it's almost like a little half squat and then a full squat and then a press at the top halfway if you were going one hand switch your hands right here clean racket squat press clean racket squat Ooh, right, I know, we're almost there. Huh. Good, 10 seconds. Whoo, three, two, one. Yes, catch your breath. Whoo, how do we feel, team? Stretch it out. You can do a little taps and stretch, that cardio mobility. Let's all grab a sip of water. We will take it down to the mat for a little core break. All right, team, that's what it looks like. Strength and power, strength and power, strength and power together, right? All right, team, have a seat. So if you need to modify, if you're in my pregnancy crowd, early postpartum, heal like diastasis, I want you to sit up nice and tall and do this movement without a twist, or you can also take it to standing. Anybody else who needs to modify, remember there's a million reasons to modify, be where you are today, you stay there. Otherwise, let's dig those heels into the ground. 
We're actually gonna keep the heels into the ground. We're gonna hold it at our chest. It's a Russian twist, but I want you to keep it very controlled. In three, two, one. Here we go. Here. Slow and controlled. You decide how much you wanna twist, whatever is good for you. If you wanna do no weight at all, if that's better for your back, that's good too. I want you to really focus on pushing those heels into the ground. If you wanna take it back a little more, you can. And if you wanna rotate a little more, if that's good for you. Otherwise, again, you can be nice and tall, just side to side without the twist. 15 seconds. Whew. Yay, Chelsea, I'm glad you thought those were fun. That's the goal, right? Whew. Also, I love to hear that it's fun after the fact because sometimes we don't always think it. In it, three, two, one. Everybody stretch your back, right? Ah, Get a little stretch all the way through. We're gonna take it all the way down. So, modification. I want you to hold at the top and just do a bridge, right? So we're just here, squeeze here. But if you can, we're gonna do a little half crunch. If you can be up or down, lift and lower. Join me here in three, two, one. Push into that kettlebell, a little lift. Drop those feet down if you want. Little pull over with the weight. It's very controlled. So we're going strength and strength and then we'll put them together for power, right? And up. Slow everything in, everything out. Tap it down. Again, modification is just a little bridge, but still engaging that core. Keep it going. I'm just gonna adjust my microphone. 15 seconds, keep breathing. Three, two, one, and relax. All right guys, so for power, you can do one or the other, or we're gonna put them together. You're gonna do that crunch, roll it up, twist, twist, roll it down. If that's too much, take the kettlebell away or just Pick one. Modification, I just want you to pick one, all right? So I don't want you to have to come up in between if you're modifying. Let's get it done. In three, two, keep it controlled, but a little bit of power on the way up. Everything in and out, all the way up. There's your power. Twist, twist, slowly down. Everything in. Power it up. Twist, twist. So I don't want you to be using your back. But as you come up, I really want you to dig deep. Power, twist, twist. Notice it's still not super fast. I want you to really engage in that core and then find that power. Twist, twist, yes! Keep it going, 15 seconds. Up. I know it's a lot of core, right? I think we got time for one more. And up. Twist, twist, relax. Yes, team, bring it up. All right, core break is over. Heart rates, whew. We're gonna get them back up. I don't know what it is with my hair things today. I usually use two. All right, team, so getting set up for a deadlift, as you can probably imagine, we're going into our favorite power move of all, a swing. All right, so we're gonna start with a deadlift, then we're we'll take it to a swing, so deadlift is just that hinge. Shoulders back, knees are soft, you're hinging. Soft bend in the knees, lots of versions of deadlifts. If it works better for you to bend a little more, you can. Otherwise, it's a hinge with a soft bend. Power it up, squeeze it through. Core engaged, weight in the center, ready, here we go. Now, again, use this back to basics to really feel where everything is. Keep breathing. There we go. Take it up. Take it down. It's a hinge, but we're keeping that back flat. You really gotta be aware on these deadlifts that we're not rounding. So pull those shoulders back and keep those shoulder blades pulled in. Come up and squeeze. Then drive the hips back. Up and squeeze, right? Weight stays close to the front of your body. Five seconds. Four. Three, two, one. 
relax, stretch it. There we go. Whoo. All right, team, you know the drill. We're not gonna go as long, we're gonna keep it uh, short, but it's a swing. If you are not comfortable with the swing or you're modifying, you've never done it, stick with that deadlift we just did. Otherwise, we're driving it back, power it up, lock it out at the top, let it drop. Shoulder blades back, core engaged, hinge it, prep it, three, two, swing it. Here we go, bring it up. Yes, good, and breathe. Keep it going, drive it up, take it up. Yes. Four more, four, three, two, one. Swing and relax, pedal those feet. Good work, team, catch your breath. All right, so let's take it. Something kind of medium, going into a regular row. So we're still getting a little bit of that hinge, so lower back is working, that's on purpose. But if you need a break, come up out of it. Core is engaged, kettlebell in the center. Roll those shoulders back. I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna row. I'm gonna set it down. I'm gonna switch my arms. So because of this, try to go with something a little heavier, because you can, right? So we're here, core is engaged. Roll those shoulders back, hinge, here we go. So bring it up, drop it down, switch. Drop it down. I like to actually put it on the ground because then I really have to pull from the ground. If that feels like too much, you can of course switch it from your hands. But having to reach for it really makes me make sure that my back is low so we're not doing that little cheat row where we're using a little more shoulders. We're actually having to pull from those big muscles in the back. Keep it going. So we're up. Yes, 10 seconds. Then our back's gonna get a little break. Well, after we do that power row, we got three, two, one. Round it up, tap it out. All right, shake it out. So power row, we're gonna keep it a little shorter. If you remember this from last week, we're just gonna really power up. Pull it up. So. It's not a jerky movement, we're just adding some power on the top. So we pull up strong, slow on your way down, right? We can do it. Go ahead, we'll keep with that alternating, but we're gonna switch our feet. So we're here, power row, drop it down. Switch, power row, drop it down. You with me? Yeah, you are. All right, team, stagger your feet, hinge it here, power, here we go. So up, drop, switch. Power up, drop it down, switch. And again, it's not jerky, it's just a little quicker and with power. So we're adding the feet so you get that break. And switch. Take it up. Switch, yes. Slow on your way down. Power it up. Keep it going. Strong in the back. So really think about pulling that elbow up to your side with strength and power and then resist it on your way down. We go out one more each side. Good. And breathe. Ooh, shake it out. All right, team. So we're gonna alternate this with a little bit of core. All right, so kettlebell in the center. Come down on all fours. So modification is just gonna be to stay on all fours. We're holding the plank first, and then we're gonna take it, bird dog is your modification. Everybody else, we're gonna take it in that high plank. We're gonna do some taps. So kettlebell is gonna be out in front. Here we go. So holding first, modification is your bird dog. Lift it up right here. We're not gonna hold as long, right? So we're here and breathe. Everything is pulled up in the center. So do that little plank checklist. Squeezing tight in those legs and those glutes. Up, lifting in the core, little tuck of the pelvis. Push the hands into the ground. So everything is tight and lifted. 
but we're still breathing, right? Make sure your arms aren't here, your hips aren't here, your arms, shoulders, elbows are right above those wrists. Holding for three, two, one, relax, yes. All right, team, let's add a little power to it. So our power is our pop-up, right? All right, so modification, you're just here to here, or you can walk it up. Otherwise, guys, we're here, tap, take it back, right? We're only going 30 seconds, let's get it done. Little power, little cardio, lots of core. In three, two, one, here we go. Tap, and back, here, tap, and back. You can also modify walking it here and take it back to your knees if that's better for you. Whatever is good for you, as long as you're getting a little movement. So bird dog, plank, bird dog, plank. Keep it going. We've got five, four, three, two, one. Stretch it out. All right, so bring it up, stretch it out. Watch this, guys. You're gonna like it. It's gonna feel a little bit like a bonus move, even though we're not there yet. But look at that, time is moving fast, team. All right, so plank to pop up, then you're gonna stagger it, you're gonna row and row. So watch me here, we'll start down here. You're here, plank, row, row with the power, pop it back, pop it up, row, row. Modification, you can just do the row up top, or you can just do the row down here. You can row and row and bird dog and bird dog. Are you with me? Bring it down. We're going to get some water after this. Whoo! Ella's going to do this later after dinner. Let's get it done. Core engage in three, two, plank. Here we go. Pop it up. Do that row both sides with a little bit of power. Pop it back. Core engage. Pop it up. Row, row, pop it back, whoo, pop it up. Flat back, so I know we're tired and we're never coming out of it, so I want you to keep that flat back as you jump into it. Up and up, pop it back, ho, core, yes, two more. Up and up, last one, breathe, up and up, ha, ah, grab some water, good work, team, whoo, catch your breath, I know, working our way down this list, guys, we're almost to Kai's painting, huh, or his, uh, whoo, what is that, it's a heart, it might be me, it's a picture of a person, all right, team, if you missed it in the beginning, my son was drawing all over my, dry erase board where I have our workout. Okay, team, catch your breath. Ha, oh, how are we feeling? Can we get another swing? Just on its own, nothing fancy about it. I know we just got a lot from that hinge position, but let's stretch it out. So let's stretch with these hamstrings. Whew, roll those shoulders back. Hamstrings are locking out. We're coming up, stretch the hip flexors, lock out in the core. Let's get it done. If you need to modify, take it with that deadlift. Otherwise, let's keep it here. Pop it back. Whew. Breathe and up. Here we go. Whew. Drive it up. Remember, push those feet into the floor. Whew. Lock out at the top, not arching, but stopping straight up. So you gotta really connect with the core. Lift in the pelvic floor. Squeeze the glutes. Squeeze the back. Remember, arms are just along for the right. Tomiga is here, yes! Breathe, four, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Swing and relax. Yes, Yvette, it didn't look that long, but you gotta know my system. I do a lot of arrows, so this to this to this to put them together, squat to curl to squat and clean. Yeah. <laughs> All right, team, catch your breath, shake it out. Oh, we are so close. All right, guys. So, another favorite coming into our power move, which is a snatch. We're gonna start with a back to basics. Grab a medium kettlebell with an upright row. Catch your breath. I want you to stand up nice and tall. We're gonna lift our elbows up high. Here we go. 
take it up. So with this upright row, I know it's a little tricky, we don't do it a ton because the common mistake that people make is they end up really tight in their head, neck, and shoulders. So I want you to think it's a little trickier with the kettlebell, but just level with those shoulders, then slowly down. Squeeze upper back, shoulders, and you are getting that, the traps, the trapezius at the top, but without that tension, right? So we're here. Think about your back and your shoulders, but not going super high. And breathe. Four more. Four. And three. And two. One. And relax. Yes, Angela, you can totally do wide rows if that's better. I know, the upright is a little tricky, especially depending on that grip of that kettlebell. All right, however, let's take it to a power move. You have two options. You have a high pull or a snatch. So here's your high pull. You're gonna have the kettlebell in the center here and drop it down. So again, it's a little hinge and then it's as if you're bringing it here and drop. Your snatch, again, just like that cleans, I want you to roll it around and it's coming all the way up to the top. Looks like this. I don't even have enough space to show you guys here, but you know it. Flip it, drop it down. Flip it, drop it down. If you have a low ceiling like me, you wanna be careful. If you're not comfortable or super familiar with the snatch, keep the high pull. But let's get it done. The most important thing is that we get some power. All right, core engage, high pull or snatch, three, two, one. Here we go. Bring it up, whoo, and take it down. Take it up, snatch or high pull. Oh, Angela, I see what you're saying. More hot, more wide rows in different workouts, right? I know, because we tend to keep it pretty simple, but it's good to get that variety. High pull or snatch, keep it going. Core engage, take it up, drop it down, switch. Whichever one you're doing, I want you to get some power. Get some power. Yes, in five, four, three, two, one. Relax, shake it out, team. All right, so stay right where you are. We gotta get this done. Let's take it to a regular lunge. What have we not done yet is a lunge. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep it simple, alternating with just switching off that kettlebell in a regular lunge. Core engaged. Shoulders back in three, two, one. Here we go. So lunge, take it forward. Lunge here. And up. Breathe into it. Drop it down. If you want to make it fancy, hand off under that leg. It's going to throw your balance just a little bit, but you can hand it off, right? And down, Hup. still drop it low, push out of that front one, either handing off the kettlebell at the front or handing it underneath your legs. Let's finish strong because we are almost done with this workout. Here we go. And breathe. Down and up. Three, two, one. Yes. All right, team. Let's take it for a little bit of power. Let's keep it simple. Put that kettlebell down in the center. No weight, let's just take it to our skater, right? So we're getting that power. You know I love a good skater because we get that transverse plane, that lateral movement. You can kick it low impact or high. Let's just get some power, let's get it done because then we're adding things together in three, two, one. Skater, and here. Keep it low if you can, and keep that power again. If that's here, shh, shh, great. If you're going a little slower, I just want intentional movement, right? And power out of it. Power into it, power out of it. 10 seconds, let's get it done. Breathe, huh. shh, shh. For five, four, three, two, one. Catch your breath. All right, guys, last thing on our schedule. 
Let's get it done. We're gonna do a lunge into a high pull or a snatch. So it's up to you. We're gonna get half and half. You're gonna lunge it down, high pull it up. Or lunge it down, snatch it up. It takes some power. If that's weird for you, I want you to do the high pull at the top and then the lunge. 20 seconds right, 20 seconds left. Let's get it done. Core zipped, kettlebell on one side. That's the side you're stepping back with. Here we go. Take it down, high pull. Drop it low or snatch. Drop it low. Yes, down, high pull. You can also just do the upper or just do the lower, it's up to you. And stretch. Four, three, two, one. Breathe for a second, set up for that other side. So what I mean guys, if you feel more comfortable, you can do the snatch and then the lunge. Snatch and then the lunge. I'm trying to get you to get the power out of that lunge, but it's up to you. Whoo! Let's get it done. Core engage, 20 seconds. Here we go. Lunge, high pull, or a lunge and snatch. Lunge, high pull or snatch. And up, keep it going. Yes, team, you got this. Heart is pumping. Five seconds to go. Keep it going. Four, three, two, one, breathe. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna get one last swing and one quick bonus. Don't worry, we got time. Go ahead and grab your heavy weight. Swing it. 30 second swing. Core engage in three, two, power. Here we go. All right, guys, I know that you're tired, so I really want you to focus on this form. Power up, let it drop. Power up, let it drop. Yes, you got this. Breathe, keep it going. Lock out at the top. Pay attention to your core and your back as you lock out in the glutes. Four, three, two, one. Swing and relax. Yes! Ha! All right, team. I know our time is ticking. Let's get one last bonus move because that's what we do here, right? I know we're tired. Weight's out of the way. Let's do it with core, right? Because we haven't had enough core. All right, team. You can do this on your knees. You can do this on your toes. We're gonna get our side plank. We're gonna get our plank press. So we're here, watch me. We're going down, down, up, up. Rotate here, other side. Down, down, up, up. Rotate here. You can do all of that from your knees. We want one minute, and you can't even see it on the screen, but I got it right here. In three, two, one. Plank press, elbow, elbow, hand, hand. Side plank, down. Elbow, elbow, hand, hand. Reach. Let's go right, left, right, left. Turn, then left, right. So switch your lead arm. If you wanna get fancy, guys, add a little dip with that hip. Hup, hup. Dip it down, yes. Where are we? Halfway there, I know it's long, but we're getting chests and shoulders and tries. Even though we got a lot of work for those arms and we're getting that core, so keep it going. So close, stay with me, here we go. Down, down, up, up. Woo. Give yourself a split second to hold that side plank, add that drop if you want. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Stretch it back, everybody, we did it. I know, bonus, bonus, bonus after the clock ticks down, stretch, child's pose. Ah, you did it, team. I know, when you saw my whiteboard in the beginning, it did not look that long, right? But we had a lot in. We actually left one thing out, whew, because of time. Let's take those knees out and just let yourself drop. If you need a sip of water, grab it. I know, that was a lot. 
high. You stay there, let your head drop. Just gonna adjust my airflow a little bit, as you know I do. Whoo, head drop into it. Good work, everybody. Those power moves are not easy. That's when we set it up with the strength. I'm just gonna take a few more deep breaths and really try to feel that lower back sink into it. Uh, yes. One foot out. Pam and Margaret, yes. Sisters doing the workout together. I love it. Makes me so happy. What a fun way to connect and do something together, but also something really good for both of you. Whoo. Breathe. Ah. Other foot in front, reach up, fold it over. Remember on these stretches, if you exhale, if you take a few big deep breaths, every time you exhale, you can usually sink a little deeper, especially from this position. That's gonna release a little bit in our back. So we love it. Let's do a couple little rolls from the hips. So if you're able, I want you to take your knees out here and just roll to the side, right? Ah and other daisy more prenatal workouts yes they are coming and don't forget to check out my prenatal ebook if you don't have it yet that'll give you more of a guide but we are going to put more soon from here cross one leg over bring it here you can always also take this sitting on the edge of a chair the couch a bench melanie loves the lunge to snatch yes it's tough because you don't have as, have as much momentum getting into that snatch so you really gotta push out of it. So it's a really challenging move, but you guys rocked it. Whether you did the high pull, the snatch, both power moves, both challenging in different ways. Uh, if you're able, hang out for a few minutes. I'm gonna grab my computer. I'm gonna talk to you guys, see who I may have missed, roll through those wrists. If anybody has any specific questions about an exercise, Ah, or about anything Body Fit by Amy, health and fitness related, let me know. Reach behind if you can. Hi. And talk a little bit about the Body Fit Athletic Club. Love seeing Mel and Jenny and so many fun friends from the Athletic Club. Chelsea, um, when you see us talking to each other like we know each other, that's what it's from, guys. But I love these live workouts because this is where I can get to know you a little bit. But in the athletic club, that's where I really get to know you and you really get more guidance from me and more personal uh, uh, help with things. I can answer your questions also from Vivian, who is our body fit registered dietitian. Um, she's awesome. You get a nutrition plan and she's there with all of your nutritional questions as well. So Mel's got a shower. Yes. Have a great weekend. Uh, everybody is thinking now, right? <laughs> Olivia, TV time over here. Listen, do not feel guilty about that screen time. If it means you get to do something for yourself, that is important to you and to your health. All right, team, make sure you get some more stretches on your own. One big deep breath in and out. You did it. That was your kettlebell strength and power workout. Great job, everybody. Huh. All right, team. So let's see, Cynthia, what gives you more bang for your buck, cardio or strength? Oh, common question that I get all the time. Um, let's see. Here's the thing. Yes, they're both important. However, I would say strength. And here's why. Because you can, as you can tell, this was a strength based workout, but your heart rate was up. So you can always, always, always get cardio in your strength workouts. As most of you guys know, almost everything on my channel, with the exception of the mobility or the Pilates or the yoga, things like that, is going to be incorporating some sort of cardio. There is no reason that you can't get them both in together. But when you are lifting something, think about it. 
when you add more load, it takes more work, more energy, meaning more calories burn to lift something heavy than it does just to move your body through space, right? So cardio is great, and I would say, and that's why I put it on my workout schedules, it's great for recovery as in to do something different because you don't want to get strength back to back to back to back to back every single day. But if, you're, if the question is, what's more bang for your buck, then I would say strength because we all need the strength, we all need the resistance for a million different reasons, for our muscles, for our bones, just for overall health. Because we do strength moves all day long, whether that's picking up a laundry basket or a kid or shutting the car door with bags full of groceries, we need that strength in our daily lives. So really important to be training for it in our workouts so we can prevent injuries, so we can be strong, so we can be mobile. So if the question is more bang for your buck, I'm gonna say strength, both are important, which is why I put both in most workouts and because in strength workouts, <clears throat> you can get your cardio, right? All right, and also, you guys know, in, in uh, cardio workouts, you're getting a lot of strength as well, but often cardio is um, repetitive movements. If you're talking about maybe running or cycling or something like that. So the nice thing about strength, we're working in all different planes of motions, all different types of movements. I try to do that in my cardio, um, based workouts as well, but you're gonna get more bang for your buck with strength. Long answer, and you again, that is a question that we get all the time, but you can get both, you can get both. All right, team, let's see. Uh, Charlotte's gonna do this later. Um, <laughs> Angela, I was gonna suggest that we do this workout again. Ah, I'm glad you liked it. Well, guys, remember all these live workouts stay live on the channel or stay up on the channel so you can do them at any time. Um, I used to also try to record them and put them up later edited. Um, now I just tend to take these ideas and you'll probably see strength and power in an, in an edited version later, which won't be exactly the same, but it's a good way for me to try out some different things. So, so glad that you liked it. Next week, guys, we're gonna do um, a body weight slash mini band version of this. You do not have to have a mini band. It's gonna be optional. It will be a body weight strength and power, but if you have a mini band, bring it. So I just wanted to clarify that. Let's see. Um, love the one handers for the kettlebell. Yay, awesome. Thank you, Dolores, for being here. Uh, Michaela, the October athlete has been so much fun. I can feel, I feel so strong. I can touch my knee, my toes without bending my knees. Yes. I know you guys, I've loved October Athlete too. Again, I don't feel like it's that different than what we normally do, but it's just giving us a different focus, some way to, ways to incorporate new things into our workouts. And we're gonna keep doing that every single month. So make sure you're on the calendar. And if you wanna get all of the extras, join us in the Body Fit Athletic Club. Yay, Dahana or Dijana, I don't know if I said that correctly, but thank you for being here. Let's see, other questions? How long do you do fitness training every day? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, listen, it's a little bit different for me because I am filming these workouts for you guys. So depending on our schedule, a lot of it is really just a work schedule thing. So if we have a day that we need to get more things filmed, then sometimes I'll film, um, two workouts in a row um, or two workouts in the day, but typically it's something like this. So maybe 30 minutes and then a 20 minute or something like that. I would say a typical schedule for me, I don't work out every single day, guys. I make sure that I get, I get days off. Um, but I would say if I took the filming out of it, then I would say my daily preferred workout would be somewhere in that 30 minute range, maybe 20 to 45. Um, mixing up the strength and cardio and then getting days off. I almost always try to take at least one full day off from, from everything so my body gets a rest. But again, as I told you guys, you don't have to do that if you like the routine of keeping every single day, but just make sure you get some that are more active recovery. Let's see, Angela, we need more chest flies. Yes, I know guys, so that's, I don't tend to do a lot of chest flies and that's, um, also just because we get more triceps when we do the press type motions. So I'm often trying to, I know we all like to focus on these muscles, right? But flies are really great because we get, it's a different angle, right? So we'll be adding more of those. It's been a little while, right? 
Um, ah, uh, day 498, Angela. Good job. Wendy loved the entire week. Ah, oh, guitar lessons for your son. How fun. Charlotte has a question. Power Pilates this week. Um, difference between a down dog and pike and also up dog and cobra. Okay, so you guys, um, if you've done any yoga, and as you know, yoga is not my, um, my, <laughs> my main uh, thing. I, I have uh, training in it, but specific yoga teachers do, you know, tons and tons of hours of specific uh, yoga certifications. That's actually one that I don't have. I do have Pilates. I do have kettlebell. I have a master's degree. I have all the other stuff, but yoga is very specific. But if you guys know, the difference between an up dog and a cobra is coming up all the way up see i'm not i'm really tight right now but coming all the way up to here where your hips are off the ground versus a cobra can be here or a modified cobra we often call that so a lot of times it's a difference of where your toes are and really just how much can you hyperextend in the back so i usually use them kind of interchangeably like come up to up dog or cobra as in whatever is better for you so if that's the question charlotte i wouldn't worry too much about it just how what feels good for you um down dog and pike so i would say again the pike motion is just a lift right so when we do the pike from here little lift and down dog is again that very specific yoga move so on the down dog we really try to lift our hips super high we try to elongate pressing our heels down the pike is more just the movement through the core again sometimes i use them interchangeably but it really is just a matter of range of motion and in what capacity you're using it so i use a pike a lot in just regular core work but if i'm doing a yoga workout i often we'll call it down dog. The idea is still the same, that you're lifting your hips from the center using your core, but down dog is almost always, you're up on that high plank on your hands. Pike can be from your elbows, from your hands, whatever it is. Um, down dog tends to be a little more elongated and a, a little more range of motion. Hopefully that answers that, Charlotte. Um, let's see, who else, what else do we got? Yes, Tracy, get some bands. They're a really great, uh, really great um, addition to your, uh, to your equipment because they're relatively affordable and they don't take up any space. You can travel with them um, and the resistance just adds a different, a different challenge. So get them if you can. Uh, any tips for perimenopause, menopause, end of the spectrum. I know that's so tricky because everything feels like it slows down and you're trying to balance out hormones and things like that. The main tip I would tell you is that you probably need to go a little heavier with your weights. A lot of times what I hear from clients is that they, you know, they're pretty used to working out with whatever they've been using. They're eights, they're tens, something like that. And they just feel like things are slowing down or the body is not responding. It may be time to go heavier. I promise it does not mean that you're gonna get big bulky muscles. Women just don't do that. What happens guys is that when we lift heavy, yes, we're gonna see some change in hormones. For women, it's not enough to make us big and to make the muscle fibers really grow, but it does help balance out your hormones. If you know, if you guys know about you know, hormones, they, they wanna be in balance. That's what we're, we're going for, right? So if we raise one, we often raise the other. So it's a good idea when you're dealing with any sort of hormonal change to be lifting because it's gonna help with that balance, but also it's just gonna take a little more for your body to respond to exercise. You're still getting the benefit, I promise. You're still getting the benefit from strength training, from cardio, but in order to get your body to respond like maybe it did 10 years ago, you probably need to go a little heavier. You may need to increase your intensity in a way that works for you. That doesn't necessarily have to mean you know, high impact, but just pushing yourself in a little bit of a different way. Also, nutrition is really important, and I know that's challenging because um, a lot of you feel like you're already really good at it, but that those are some things that we talk about over in the athletic club of different ways to, um, to tweak your nutrition depending on what stage of life you're in. So join us over there if you can. Let's see. Um, all right. 
Two years, Victoria, two years post multiple delivery via C-sections. Your workouts helped me during my pregnancy and postnatal. Um, help my lower abs now that my diastasis recti has resolved. So, Victoria, I think keep incorporating the concepts that you've done when you were healing your diastasis of that deep core breathing. Sometimes it's a little trickier, usually when it comes to lower abs, and this is for everybody, whether you've had babies or not, it's a pressure management. So we wanna make sure that that TA breathing, that we're incorporating that into all of our workouts because if we're pushing down, we're pushing out on the lower abs, right? So if we're bearing down and we're not managing our breath, so really think on that exhale that we wanna pull everything in, in our core work, but also in our regular lifting. So again, something else we talk about in the athletic club. So I would keep doing what you're doing, incorporating those slower movements that you've done with diastasis. You of course can, um, can challenge yourself in different ways. Like you don't have to do the modifications. If you're feeling good, you're feeling strong, but really focus on that engagement and on your breath control and on your posture. That makes a huge difference. Let's see, oh Charlotte, yeah, I, I did say Cobra or Up Dog. I thought they were the same. Pretty much the same, right? <laughs> it's just a matter of can you get a little higher? Often a matter of your foot and your hand placement, but um, let's see. Alyssa, thank you for joining. Uh, clean movement with my kettlebell, it moves a lot. I don't have good alignment. Have any suggestions? So Anne Marie, do you mean with two hands or with one? Um, a lot of times it's a difference of the size of your kettlebell. I know sometimes, um, if you have a wider kettlebell, it can be tricky. So, you know, if I look at my Bowflex kettlebell, which is adjustable, which I love, um, but it's a little trickier sometimes because it's wider, right? So that clean, sometimes a little trickier versus one that's a little bit smaller. Um, but on the flip side, I would say this one is a little easier, right? Because I can flip it around. This is a good way to show you the one-handed clean Again, you want it to circle around. So you're not coming around like this, right? But it's not a flip. I have it on the lightest here, guys, so don't worry. Um, sometimes we think of those cleans and those snatches as that we're flipping. That's not what we want. That's gonna hurt. We want the movement to bring it around, right? So I think for the clean, let's see, Anne-Marie, if you said, so I would say, one, if it's just feeling too tricky, just keep with the curl. It's the same movement. But if you're doing the two-handed, really just think, Shh. it's really a matter, watch my hands, here to here. And the idea is just to get that you get that power and you tighten everything out, right? Shh. And down. Shh. If it's one, flipping it around, but thinking Shh. power, and then you wanna rack it pretty quickly. Guys, the one thing I will say, especially with kettlebell, is that these power moves are challenging and they take a little bit of time to learn. So I should, as many of you have asked, make some instructional videos on the channel because I think that would be really helpful. Um, but I would say, with the one hand, right. So I would say get that power, really think about driving your hips back. It's not like a hinge like we would do with a swing or a deadlift, but that that's what's giving you the power, and then shh, bring it up. So it's here. Shh. So the difference is if we're just doing a regular curl, right? That's upper body. When we add the power to it, it takes that out of it, so you typically can go a little heavier, but you really do have to, little bit of hip movement, power it up, and then lock it out. Shh. I would also say, guys, there is going to be a little bit of wrist discomfort with any clean, with any snatch, that's kind of comes with the territory with using kettlebells that people complain about it all the time. There's not a ton you can do about that. Yes, we wanna you know, make sure that we're moving it around and not flipping it, but if that bothers you, then just stick with the strength move. I promise you're still gonna get the benefit. Um, power is just fun to add in and it's a little bit different, but if that really bothers you, or you feel like you can't get it, can't execute it, stick with the strength move. It's not that big of a deal. So let's see, Alyssa, Alyssa, any difference, beneficial difference between kettlebell or dumbbell? I don't have kettlebell, so I always use dumbbells. Listen, I, kettlebells can be really fun. If you, if you have the chance to work with a kettlebell, if you don't have one or you can borrow one or you can try one at a gym um, or find one you know, for not a ton of money, you'll feel the difference. It's more about the weight distribution 
about the centrifugal force. It's a lot of different things. It's about how the weight is really compact, things like that. But in general, they're very, very similar. So I wouldn't worry too much. Hi. I wouldn't worry too much if you don't have one, but if you do get one, you'll feel the difference. I think swings are a lot easier with kettlebells. There are some things that I love with kettlebells, some things that I love with dumbbells. Um, but I wouldn't worry about it if you don't have it. You can, if you feel like you can still um, get through the workouts with your dumbbells, then you're fine. But it's more about being able to generate the force and the power and also the weight distribution of the bell. So like this is 25 pounds versus holding, you know, a 25 pounder, which might be a lot bigger. So it's a little bit different. It's kind of a, um, if you get my, if you have my kettlebell ebook, one second, one second, I'm answering I'm questions. Sure. Okay, you can. Um, uh, I explained this a little bit more, but it's more about the weight distribution and how you can move with them, right? So a lot of times I think snatches are easier with a dumbbell, but I think swings are easier with a kettlebell. So I wouldn't stress too much if you don't have one. I think if you had one, you would kind of feel the difference, but um, it's a lot of times it's a matter of preference. I really love kettlebells, but um, let's see, Angela only has one kettlebell with no dumbbells, but when I got both, it definitely gives a difference, have a different way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's not a bad idea. If you can find one, a good place to look are those discount stores. I'm not sure uh, where you're located, but um, you can often find them really affordable at you know a big box store like a Target or a Walmart or also at like a TJ Maxx or Marshalls or things like that. So come here, buddy. All right, my crew is back. I guess they are telling me that it is time for brunch. Ah, Alyssa, uh, is, I've worked with kettlebells at the gym, but it's been a while. All right, guys, it's time for me to go back to this crazy life and maybe I'll have a little bit of brunch with it as well. Yes, do you want to say one thing? Okay. All right, guys, thank you so, so much. Can we say bye, guys? Bye. Bye, bye. Thanks for joining. Look, everybody's saying hi. Hi. Bye. Bye.